Lillian is the co-founder of the Andean Cat Alliance, and I've known her since 2003, since the first time we all came together for the expo. So Lillian, it's a great honor to bring you up here and introduce you to our friends here. Thank you, Larry. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Many thanks for being here. I will talk a brief uh, uh, about the Indian Cat Alliance, what, what we do. Well, we are a network of people that we join uh, to work together for the Indian Cat Conservation, for the Indian Cat, to conserve this very beautiful, elusive, and rare cat, Indian Cat. We are based in the four countries where the Indian cat is present. We work in, in, we have teams in Peru, in Bolivia, in Chile, and Argentina. We found the Andean Cat Alliance in 1999. So this year we celebrate our 15th anniversary. So what we did all these years, what we achieved as, as the Andean Cat Alliance, First, uh, we knew when we start our work, we knew very few, very little about the Indian cat. You can see this, this uh, red point is the presence of the Indian cat. We, we knew very little about the, but uh, so we prioritized to do field work to know where this cat was, was found. In all this year, we get this distribution map, you can see we improve our knowledge of the presence of the Indian cat. We get around 260 um, new records that imply around 100 new localities. We knew that the Indian cat was mainly restricted to the highlands above 2,000 uh, feet. But now we know that uh, it's present not only in the highlands of the mountain and the end range, but also is in the Patagonia, in uh, elevation lower than 2,000 feet. For getting this information, we have to look for scats, because uh, have a sighting of this cat is, is just a matter of luck. And also we work with camera traps. Even working with camera traps at the beginning, it was also a matter of luck to have a, a, a picture of this cat. But with luck, uh, we, we can get uh, very good pictures of, of this beautiful cat. Uh, also, um, we can get this, these pictures that give us information not only about the presence of the cat, but also we can see here the mother and her kitten, so we can know that the reproductive period of this, uh, this cat, this, was, this, uh, camera, this uh, picture was taken in December. And also we can have this picture, this very nice tail. <laughs> but if we, if we know that it's uh, a young cat tail, so uh, it said uh, that this species is present in that place. Uh, in fact, this, uh, this picture is one of the first photographic, uh, photographic records for Peru. So uh, camera trap and scats are very important uh, tools for us. Also, uh, if we, do, we carry out systematic uh, camera trapping and to know about uh, the density, uh, to estimate the density population of the Andean cat. We were able also to radio uh, collar Andean cats. In 2004, we um, live capture a, a female Andean cat and place a radio collar. And currently, uh, we have four uh, uh, collared cats, Andean cats, in northern Argentina. Uh, we are getting more information uh, with these cats about their movements, about their habitat use. So we are getting more useful information to know about this cat species. Um, research is very important for us, but also we have to work with education. One of the threats of the, for the Nian cat is uh, hunting. So 
All this year we work uh, mainly with school students at the communities where the Indian Cat is present. We reach uh, around 2,000 uh, school students. Also we work in protected areas. Um, we do training to park rangers and also community people that work with us in, sur in survey uh, fields, uh, field surveys, and also in, acti in education activities. And uh, more recently, we are working with the adult people of the communities because uh, we want to engage them in our work for conserving this, this cat. We promote the, a more sustainable use of the resource to mitigate the impact on the habitat of the Andean cat because the main threat to the Andean cat is habitat loss and habitat destruction. So um, our main li line actions are research, education, training, and community-based conservation. Uh, 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 we now have, uh, at least in one uh, country, one community-based conservation project. This is a very short overview of what the, the, the Andean Cat Alliance we are doing for conserving and knowing this uh, um, beautiful cat. And now I, I want to introduce my colleague, uh, Mario Lucarini. He works in Argentina, is also a co-founder of the Andean Cat Alliance, uh, well, he will talk more about what uh, he's doing in Argentina and, as, and what we do about the Andean Catalan. Thank you for your attention. This is the Andean cat. As you can see, it's obviously the most beautiful cat in the world. <laughs> no doubt about that. Uh, it can be easily recognized because of its tail. It has this uh, thick and very long tail. It's the, about the size of a house cat, but with this uh, much bigger and thicker tail. This cat looks quite uh, relaxed, but unfortunately it should not be like that because uh, as mentioned uh, before by Lillian, this is a highly endangered cat. The numbers are not known. We don't know yet how many of these cats are left. It's also, uh, Lillian didn't mention it before, but it's also extremely, um, uh, it's a solitary species. So added to this uh, elusiveness that it's typical of a cat, uh, it's very rare to see two of them. It's almost sure that it's a, a, a mother with a kid. Uh, the Andean cat uh, lives uh, in the Andes, but uh, in the most rugged uh, habitats of the Andes, uh, and it shares its habitat with its main prey, this rabbit-like rodent called uh, mountain biscaccia. There are uh, many things that I could tell you about what we are doing. I am uh, in the high Andes, uh, working with one of the uh, most elusive uh, cats. It's like looking for a, a nail in a high stack, you say. Well, looking for an elusive cat in this kind of habitat is almost about the same. And uh, there are also a few other problems. <clears throat> you can have a huge thunderstorm like this one, especially during summer. Winds are very strong uh, and quite frequent. Temperature goes down to minus 15, minus 20 Celsius uh, at night. And sometimes uh, you have uh, the water frozen until midday. But this is not quite a problem because usually you don't have water at all. We are in a desert. And uh, so in this kind of habitats, it's easier to find salt than water. And when we do get uh, water, we may get too much of it, uh, and you may end up stuck in the middle of a river with your truck trying to reach your study area. So we sometimes uh, do go back to more traditional and more reliable uh, uh, means of transportation like donkeys. And we also have to deal with uh, this cat uh, which has uh, the uh, not very kind towards us, 
uh, habit of uh, using uh, the most uh, steep areas of these habitats. That's me, by the way, if you don't recognize me. And uh, so we have to deal with this kind of habitat. Uh, and uh, sometimes you may end up like this uh, student uh, volunteering for us. But the most uh, annoying uh, fact uh, of uh, working in this area is altitude sickness. We work at more than 4,000 meters of altitude, uh, 13,000 feet. And uh, so this time, for instance, I spent uh, two days in the tent uh, waiting until I felt better. And you never know when it's going to get you or if you will be fine. And in these cases, uh, you, think, uh, the, you end up thinking that uh, a tank of oxygen is your best friend. So once again, probably you're wondering why then <laughs> with the Indian cat? Well, we think that uh, the Indian cat is uh, the most beautiful cat in the world. I already told you. Uh, but it's not only about cats. There is much more than that. There is uh, a lot of uh, many different species, uh, uh, like these plants, which are endemic, which means that you can only find them uh, up there. Or like this uh, incredibly adapted uh, uh, creature, which is uh, a plant, which looks like a rock, but it's a plant. You can even step on top of it, uh, and it feels like a rock, but it's a plant. And then you have uh, a lot of uh, birds, some of them uh, almost invisible, some others uh, giving some colors, some touches of colors to these uh, barren landscapes, and reproducing in the rare wetlands of the uh, of the highlands. And then uh, all above uh, them all is the South American condor and another endangered species uh, and uh, the largest flying bird in the world. Uh, it's uh, relative to your Californian condor, but it's a different species. And we think that by protecting the Andean cat, we will also be able uh, to conserve uh, some other carnivores like this. Uh, surprising uh, culpeo foxes which are able uh, to survive in these kinds of deserts. And also the, the top predator of uh, most of South America, the mountain lion. Many different uh, species of uh, small mammals. The Viscacha, she's cute, isn't she? <laughs> and also the very elegant uh, Vicuñas, a South American camelid called Vicuña, and the guanaco. And also, finally, the interactions, the natural interaction between species which are still going on uh, in these uh, uh, habitats, in these landscapes. And we hope that we will also be able to preserve uh, a, a very old uh, culture and traditions uh, that come uh, from, uh, well, um, long before the, the Incas, and that they are still there. This is a, a land of, uh, of contrast, a land of uh, mystery. You have uh, this uh, huge uh, volcano stopped by snow, and uh, this, uh, this area where you feel like being on the moon or on another planet, really. And we have this uh, contrasting, uh, unexpectedly contrasting colors, like here, red and green together, red deserts, white mountains, pink. It's uh, a land uh, where you feel uh, like uh, just sitting there and uh, you think, uh, OK, I'll just stay here and look around. Because when the sunset is coming, uh, the, the whole land uh, gets fire. And it burns. It burns like in, in your soul. And then comes the night. Millions of stars shining up in the sky. 
until the moon uh, comes out and he wipes them all out because it's so bright and you're sitting here in your tent and you think, wow, who turned on the light? So it's a, a land uh, where the, one of the last wilderness areas in the world and one of also the least known wilderness areas in the world where you feel a sort of um, insignificant but at the same time you really feel like uh, the land and the sky are competing uh, to to fill uh, your soul of uh, of immensity and so we think that uh, thanks to the support of the, all of you we are we will be able not to, to not only to prevent uh, this cat from uh, going extinct but also to preserve uh, this uh, unique uh, ecosystem and this uh, last wilderness area in South America and uh, that we will be able to create uh, a better world, a better future for both cats and people where they can uh, live together in harmony. Thank you very much.